David Parker, five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise on behalf of the Labour Party to take a call in the first reading of the Patents, Trent Tasman, Patent Attorneys and Other Matters Amendment Bill. As other members have uh, usefully described the bill, I won't uh, do that all again. I will, though, sir, just recount to, for the House that we always need to keep in mind the balance that we're trying to strike with patent law. On the one hand, we want to encourage innovation in society, uh, uh, and to do that, we've got to give commercial advantage in some situations where people uh, are, um, invest time and effort in making a new discovery. Now, why do we do that? Uh, we do that for two main reasons. One, uh, we want to encourage the world to become a better place through encouraging that sort of endeavour that makes uh, uh, new discoveries for the benefit of humanity over time. On the other hand, we also want to encourage the long-term publication of those inventions so that other people can leverage off that knowledge uh, and uh, either take that invention further in the future or um, uh, produce that same new invention more cheaply to the benefit of more people. So we try to balance uh, that against, uh, we, we try to achieve that by giving people a time-limited monopoly right to exploit the, uh, for their commercial gain the commercial opportunities that arise from their invention. Obviously, if someone doesn't have that monopoly right, it's less likely that they'll invest in the first place. There are other models of investment. There are some people who think that uh, drug discovery would be more efficiently worldwide if the, the countries that effectively fund the cost of those drugs cooperated and decided what were the drug targets and actually put government money into uh, pursuing those directly rather than uh, letting the private sector do it, uh, or at least some of it. A lot of the research that is relied upon by the private sector is already public funded. Um, and there are some who think that it would be more efficient for countries to move beyond a patent route for drug discovery and more cost effective given that in the end it's governments that by and large that fund the patented drugs through their health systems eventually anyway. Nevertheless, we are where we are in that international paradigm and uh, uh, we should make sure that it works uh, appropriately. Uh, we also must always be aware that if you're giving someone a monopoly right, they exploit it to maximum advantage and they're not constrained as much in their conduct. They, they're, they're, they price it for the maximum price they can sell it for rather than competing down to a price that relates to the cost of producing the good or the service, which is or mainly goods that have been patented. So we've got to be really careful that we don't inappropriately extend the terms of patent right. If we do that, we actually don't end up with any more patented goods. We actually just ex ex extend the period of patent royalty and the monopoly rent that can be extracted from exploitation of it. So if this legislation was coming to the House suggesting an extension to the term of patents, I, for one, would be standing up and asking the government to prove that this would actually meet the social purpose of patents, which would be to enco encourage more innovative discovery on the part of people in society, and I don't think it would. Therefore, I'm one of those people who doesn't think we should extend patent rights beyond uh, the current terms that we have. Uh, having said that, we've also got to be aware that we have rules that are pretty consistent with what the rules are internationally, otherwise it's a bit unwieldy internationally, and perhaps uh, we could also suffer the disadvantages that patented innovations overseas would not, be become, would not become uh, available in New Zealand because those that had those patented rights wouldn't be willing to bring them to New Zealand, and New Zealand would suffer a disadvantage in that regard. And so, uh, for that reason, I think uh, that the government's probably right to be uh, correcting this uh, uh, anomaly, which seems to have been introduced in 2013, which allows a patent to be challenged on the ground that the more than one invention that has been uh, uh, patented lacks, or the, 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 the more than one area of invention uh, lack unity, uh, which is, as I read the explanatory note, and I, I don't pretend great expertise in this area, um, it's, it's suggesting that the lack of unity uh, as a ground of opposition, which is introduced in the Patents Act in 2013, is out of whack with the rest of the, the, the world and, and can lead to unfairness in that um, patents that ought to be approved are either not approved or struck down later.